My name is Alexander Friedman and you are at the VAPI Community Webinar. Uh, VAPI Community is the place where we're going to find huge amount of information, very important information that will help your business to grow. And today we have invited to our webinar Lazar, Lazar Zepnik. Uh, Lazar, <laughs> it's like good luck. Uh, good luck with pronouncing the last name. I know. Yeah. <laughs> did I did it correct? Uh, so and so, I, I'm okay with it. Like okay. Because... <laughs> okay. You you can pronounce it correctly, so that the Brady will know. No worries. It's it's okay. Like nobody can pronounce it like outside of Serbia. So I'm good with with like just Lazar or Lazar. 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 Lazar is a PPC expert with 10 years of experience and the owner of growing PPC agency Sellers Alley. Hi, Lazar. Yeah, nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me, Alexander. Thank you. Thank you that you're here. Uh, so, as you said that I pronounced it a bit differently, your surname, can you, can you present yourself a little bit for us? Starting. Yeah, start so with don't your name, your name. be rough on yourself when it comes to my last name. Only place outside of Balkans that I that I heard people pronouncing it the right way is uh, Lithuania, okay. because of Z and all of it. I don't know if you guys have Z. Uh, yeah, we have Z. So we, oh, okay, then you can do it as well. It's Zepinich. Ah, it's Zepinich. Of course, I can do this. Okay. Can <laughs> I do it correct now? Okay. Yo, okay. I, I didn't expect this, to be honest. <laughs> yes. So, as you mentioned, I'm the owner of Amazon PPC agency called mm -hmm. Sellers Alley, and it's growing, fast-growing PPC agency, to be honest. We are focused on Amazon uh, PPC, Amazon advertising on both Seller Central and AMS platforms, now Amazon Advertising Console. Also, we provide um, other services that are related to PPC to Amazon sellers. Uh, I have around, well, I, I'm used to telling like nine years, but like since it's August, I should start saying like it's 10 years of experience in PPC. Uh, for about five or six years, I, I've been uh, working for Google Ads and Bing and a whole bunch of different advertising platforms. And uh, for the last five years, I, I've been working on, on Amazon platform only. So, I, think, I think in some months you, you can start saying over 10 years. Yeah, give, <laughs> give me now, like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even, even if it's just one month, but it's already over 10 years. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> So how, how did you get uh, to this point? How did you, why did you start to do the Amazon? And it, tell us about your journey a little bit. Well, at the beginning, I, I, I worked as a marketing manager, not doing PPC. I did uh, everything apart from PPC. I did uh, radio commercials, TV commercials, and other stuff for a company that is, that is like Media Markt in Europe or Best Buy in the US. Okay. Uh, I, I was their uh, marketing manager and at one point we hired an agency that did PPC for us and they sent me reports and I was like, I have no idea what's this. And like, I cannot understand any of the abbreviations here or anything. So I went to the CEO and I told him, listen, I need to go to this company. They need to teach me like the basics so I can understand more about the reports and everything. And well, he was like, yeah, sure. You'll never come back. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I, I I went there. I was I was blown away with all of the information about PPC, and it was so good. Like when you compare PPC to radio or or uh, or let's say billboards, yeah. Like you can invest a lot of money in that, especially if you're going to like use some TV channel that is uh, super popular and so on. Like minutes and seconds, they are really expensive, and you never know what's going to be the, the impact on your sales and on the other hand when it comes to ppc you get it all right away like when it comes to amazon ppc you have all of the information inside of 72 hours there's a basically discrepancy there uh, mm -hmm. you have initial information at the beginning like on day one but like because of the attribution and a whole bunch of different stuff like uh because one of the important things that, that sellers don't usually look at is um attribution and that's uh, like part of the funnel. When you, for example, you want to buy a car 
and let's say that, that, that you're not really sure what kind of car you want to buy. And you go to Google and you search like what types of car there exist. And you find out that there is convertible, there is like luxury car, sedan or like whatever, a van or so on. And you decide that you're okay with, I don't know, a luxury car. Obviously, you're okay with that. So then I, I after like that, that, you start like finding like what are the options? Like what are the cars that I can buy? Like what are the brands? And then you decide like maybe Mercedes is a good car for you. Obviously, that's a good car for everybody. But <laughs> <laughs> it's not a paid commercial, but it's true. So like you decided to buy that car. And after that, you're like, okay, where can I buy it? And you start searching for it and you find a dealership and you go there and buy it. So as an Amazon seller, you always look at the last click. That one that, that went from um, the ad to the dealership to the moment you made the purchase. But right. overall, when it comes to search funnel and buying funnel, there is more of it. Like not every search is buying intentional and not all the time you know what you want to buy. So just, just stop me whenever you wish because I can talk about yeah, actually it's actually it's a very a very interesting question. We were discussing it this week. Uh, we discussed that in some countries there is still uh, like tradition or people got used to search in Google, but in some countries people already stopped searching in Google and when they want to buy something, they don't go to Google, they go straightly to Amazon. Yeah. So it's absolutely changed habit. Is yeah, it? It's insane. It's it's like from uh, from switching from from desktops to to mobile phones. Right. A couple of years ago, it's it's such a strange and interesting thing that that that, that you see that people are changing their ideas and as Amazon, Amazon sellers, um, when when they do advertising, they can see uh, that everything is made for like purchase related stuff and like whatever you do there it's it's oriented to buy stuff and people that are there they want to buy and that's the whole point but when you're googling it or if you're on facebook or social network you can do whatever you wish like commute or walk around and like just doing out of boredom how you how you use it in general you stopped making any advertising in google or or a different way you use google searching process in some way uh, well, there is something relatively new that Amazon introduced. Well, it's not new because they introduced it two or three years ago, but it was in alpha version or something. So just like a couple of sellers had it. And the last year it was introduced like beta version for most of the sellers. But if you ask, you, you would be able to get it. It's attribution. So Amazon attribution is basically a platform inside of Amazon that resembles basically the, when you look at it, it looks just like Amazon advertising console, but mm -hmm. that's not it. It's used just to um, track external traffic. And that's a huge leap forward when it comes to Amazon and Amazon sellers. Now they can track what's going on outside of Amazon. And like when you bring the traffic on Amazon, expectations and reality are not the same there because okay. like whenever you create ads on google or facebook or bing or wherever you want to make the same amount of sales for the same amount of money that you invested yeah. but yeah. those guys there are not having the same intentions just, uh, like on amazon mm -hmm. so for those guys they basically you you lose more money. Return on ad spend is way lower. If you get like uh, ROAS at around two, you're good. If you have it above that, you're even better. But most of the time, it's not like that. And the thing is, uh, when you uh, do, for example, Google ads there, what you want to do is create um, broad modifier keywords. Those keywords are the ones with plus in front yeah. of it. You yeah. tell that, that way to Google, like I want these, this word or these words to show up in a search query. Just like that variation, not like some variation of that keyword. So that mm -hmm. way, when you uh, place plus Amazon, you search for the people that want to buy product on Google, but they're Google it like to get it on Amazon. So it's an interesting way of thinking. So basically, there are, such, there are such people that want to buy on Amazon, but they are searching the Google. 
Yeah, they do because they, they, they don't want to just write down Amazon.com and then search there. But <laughs> like if their default browser is Google, they would just write down like phone case Amazon and click search and okay. you would get some results for Amazon. Okay, interesting. Yeah, so that's one of the... In general, it is like an additional uh, way of advertising that doesn't give as much result as professional PPC marketing. Well, that, that's professional PPC marketing, but it, it's on Google. That's, that's the main thing. Like, you, your agency, do you suggest companies to uh, use Google or, or not to focus on it? Well, it, it really depends from, from client to client, depending on their size, what's their focus on, if they know their audience, that's super important because there are way more options to advertise on Google than on Amazon. Like um, you can uh, target by devices, by platforms, by gender, by so many things that you cannot do on, on Amazon. So mm -hmm. if, if you know your audience, if you go to the Amazon and you look your brand analytics, and that's a really good advice what you can do there, go to brand analytics, check your audience, check if men or women are buying it, check what's the age of your brands and so on. You can learn so many about your business from brand analytics. And that way, if you have your Facebook page or you do Facebook ads, you know how to address them. Or if you communicate with your clients, obviously you want to be polite and that kind of stuff. But do you want to be a trendy company that is uh, super fancy or you want to keep with like style or something? That's the, that's the thing that you can learn from brand analytics easily. And that's the thing like that you can use when you create banners. Or that's the way how you can uh, search your, your next product because you know who is your audience. You know, like if, if only like if like ninety percent of the the customers are are men, are you going to to sell something for women? Maybe you should at some point, but you already have audience that that you've built and you want to grow your brand, and basically you want to expand what you're you're selling to them. Right. So for focus on your uh, on on your target auditory. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, it is interesting, you're not pushing to uh, marketing only in Amazon. You're saying, look in general. Look in yeah, general. because you don't want to have all of your eggs in one basket, you know. You, you want to have a Shopify store as well. Just like to be sure if somebody, like there are still people that search something on Amazon. They see a good brand. They see something really cool that they would like to buy do you know professional communities or uh, speakers in shopify we, we we are searching who is professional in shopify in europe and it is very difficult to find these people yeah it's kind of tricky isn't it yeah absolutely Maybe so we can discuss later i can i can like pull somebody i can i cannot promise but like we, we can probably so find somebody people, so many people who already have experience and talk about amazon and so, so little about shopify but but shopify is also a rather st strong tool to sell your goods exactly yeah like w from our experience when when um established seller on amazon wants to expand to shopify they yeah. usually use fulfilled by Amazon on Shopify. So mm -hmm. basically it's like a cover that is basically their store, but it's fulfilled by Amazon. And there's a huge yeah. difference. On the next step comes Wapi and says, stop doing this and be fulfilled by Wapi. <laughs> or that, even better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh we discussed a lot of different topics shopify google but uh, today topic is most common ppc mistakes and how to fix them and lazar has prepared the presentation for us so please lazar you you, you can start yeah i have a presentation give, give me just a second to share it mm -hmm. uh, 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 okay. okay i think it should work Okay, so today we are going to talk about most common PPC mistakes and how to fix them. Like for all of your viewers and listeners, if they want to have um, 
the presentation after after the talk I'm, I'm more than glad to share it at some points they have a bit more text just because they they can like look straight from it so uh, oh, give me just a second. Yeah, so what we are going to, to talk about is going to be about obviously most common PPC mistakes and how to fix them. Th these are the information that um, that we found from a whole bunch of different sellers, from people that are just starting to sell on Amazon yeah. to guys that are eight-figure sellers or even bigger. And you would be impressed how many big sellers are having some uh, pretty basic mistakes. So don't expect always that, that some huge sellers that are way bigger than you are know something super special that you're not fully aware of or stuff like that. So it's a combination of more or less everything. Well, we basically mentioned about uh, what Seller is Alley about. So uh, maybe we should talk about what's the biggest mistake that you can have. The biggest mistake that you can have is not to have any strategy. Like, one smart guy that I worked for in the past said like, it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense to be a really big and like powerful ship if you don't know um, the direction where you're sailing. So like one of the most important things that you should know is to, to have a business plan, to have an idea of, of everything and also to, um, to look at your data. Data is the most important part of everything when it comes to advertising on, on Amazon. And there is literally no tool on the market that owns more data about your uh, account than you have. So you're the owner of data. Just be sure that, that's, that you know what you're looking at and what you're searching for. So how, where how, do you add? How to understand that I don't have an uh, advertising strategy? Can you repeat what's the, um, why, why to, is that? How to understand that I am making a biggest mistake and I don't have an advertising strategy. Well, you need to, to have an idea, like what's your goal and like, what are the different options? Like when you're launching the product, it's not the same thing as when you have a dying product that, that you want to get rid of and stop selling it. So you need to, be fully aware of your margins, to be fully aware of what are the next steps and what, what's the list of steps that you want to do with your product. And it's not about PPC only, it's about overall selling on Amazon. So you want to be sure that you know the pricing, the margins, the, the stocks, the, your PPC and everything. And in certain situations, like this is the plan when we have this situation, like when we're getting out of stock, or this is the situation when um, we, we have too many units, like one of the biggest problems on, on, on Amazon is when you uh, purchase too many units and you cannot sell them and you start getting long storage fees. And for the guys that never got long storage fees, that's really good for you guys. But the moment when you start getting long storage fees, trust me, it's not a pleasant thing to, to see. So that's really, really expensive especially in Q4 because Amazon wants to have a big fluctuation of, of products and to get a lot of sales. So they don't want to look at product for a year or half a year in, in the warehouse. So okay, as see. I mentioned, there's a bunch of stuff that can be a problem and like not really just a problem, but more or less like what can be a mistake, but can be fixed. So as you can see, there, there's like from portfolios, bidding, bad, bad account structuring, defensive campaigns, A-B tests, and a whole bunch of different stuff. We're going to cover more or less all of them today. So what are the most common mistakes that, that's, that are happening in the account? One of the first thing is portfolios. People don't create portfolios and they uh, just ignore them. They were introduced uh, maybe a year ago. Uh, and one of the important things is like if you have one product, it's okay not to have portfolio. The moment when you get more than one ASIN in your account, you should mm -hmm. probably think about separating them so you can cover everything for each product. One of the important things about portfolios is that you can place daily caps, basically budget caps for a certain mm -hmm. date range. So you can say, okay, for this product, I'm willing to invest this amount of money. 
and from there I'm going to optimize ACUS, real ACUS, or whatever metric you want to optimize. Mm -hmm. Especially it's a good thing if the product is unprofitable when it comes to advertising. So you want to um, cut down the bleeding of money and you don't, you don't want to overspend. You want to be absolutely sure that everything that you're investing there is like focused in the, in the right direction. So be, budget cap is super cool feature that you have for portfolios. It's basically a budget that you have on campaign level or uh, let's say daily cap that you have on the account level. So this is something in between. And if you want to uh, place um, budget cap for certain ASIN, for certain group of ASINs or certain campaigns, like if you want to um, like limit the spend for group of campaigns, like you want to spend up to one, $100 on automatic campaign for a certain group of products or so on. So there are a whole bunch of stuff that you can do there, so many variations and so on. Mm -hmm. Other important thing uh, that you should be aware of is bad account structuring. Uh, when it comes to bad account structuring, you can talk about that for ages. The thing is that, that people usually skip creating uh, brand campaigns. Like you should always have that one campaign that has your brand name in exact form. Uh, why is it important? It's important because um, at the beginning, you're not going to get a lot of traction because nobody knows about your brand. And over time, you, you're going to see the spent increasing on that campaign. And that's a good thing because you're protecting your, your uh, brand name from others because others can place your brand name in, as a keyword in their campaigns. And you don't want that. You don't want them to show up instead of you. And th that way you're protecting your brand. And also all of the sales that are going through this campaign are profitable for you because nobody is as relevant as you are for, for that keyword. Uh, apart from that, there is a bunch of stuff like top generic terms, problem solvers, no push campaigns. Like one of the things that is uh, interesting is problem solvers. Pro problem so solvers are usually keywords that you're not fully aware of. Like, what can your product do? So we had a guy that was selling um, like uh, crayons and markers and that kind of stuff, like for writing and coloring. And when we checked reviews, there, there, there are a bunch of um, tools and softwares where you can extract reviews. And when you filter them out by, by star rating, so you check your five star ratings to see why are people happy so you can improve it even more or like do something about that create strategy about that or like you can do the same thing for the negative stuff what like what you should really improve and and to improve your sales but when it comes to those five star reviews like we got information about those markers like people uh, started writing down that they they covered scratches on on furniture with them which is really interesting thing. Like I would never imagine of it. And the seller, the owner of the product didn't really know uh, like that you can use it for it. Like that's something absolutely different. Or like if you're selling, I don't know, ashwagandha, for example, or some other supplement, people with supplements probably already know it. Like they, they have problem solving campaigns that mm -hmm. use those keywords. Like, uh, anxiety relief or like um, um, joint pain relief supplement or stuff like that. That's something that is not really uh, describing your product, but is describing your problem that, that this product is going to solve. So branching out campaigns is really, really important. So yeah, I covered this more or less. So when it comes to other thing that can be a problem, Mm -hmm. is your bidding go going in literally every direction so at one point amazon introduced something new uh, is bidding by placement like you you are able to adjust your bid by the placement on on amazon on search result page so uh, people, what they did, you can go up to 900%, meaning that you can multiple your, your bid by nine. And like, instead of $1, you can start paying uh, $9, which is insanely big uh, amount, especially if you, for example, calculate that you need around seven clicks to get one sale. 
in option number one, it would be seven dollars or 63 in option number two when you place 900% as a bidding by placement. So whenever Amazon introduces something new, that's really cool, but take it with a reserve because that's something new for every one of us and maybe you're going to make a mistake and just try it, but slowly. We suggest trying it if you're not fully aware of how to use it by increasing it by five, 10, 20, 25%, don't go over that. There's another strategy which says that you should decrease your bids, like flatten it down to like 10, 20 cents, and then uh, to bid just for one placement. For some people, it's working, not for everybody. So mm -hmm. PPC is all about A-B tests. Try everything, try whatever you wish, and, and like some of the stuff are going to work for you. As, some always, as always in marketing, it's always about A-B testing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That, that's one of the main things that you should uh, always think of. Like when you say, I'm done with everything, I have all of the campaigns that I need, I'm pretty sure that you can A-B test a lot of stuff. Like at least you can A-B test um, something in product mm -hmm. and to see how it's going to affect your current campaigns. So campaign bidding strategy. Like it used to be one way how to bid and there was something that was called bid plus. That was until maybe a year, year and a half ago. And it was pretty okay. Nobody ever clicked on bid plus, trust me, literally ever. Maybe they decided to click it on during Cyber Monday or Black Friday, just to be sure that they are picking all the sales there. Uh, but when it comes to Black Friday and Cyber Monday, trust me, just increase your budget. There is no need, huge need to increase your bids big time what is important about bidding strategies you are now offered three ways how to do it so you get dynamic bids that get that can go down only so if you place your bid one dollar you it can go to 50 cents if the next guy that is um bidding against you is at i don't know 50 cents then you're getting like 51 cents so there's always one cent above so that's a really good trick if you want to spend one dollar on sale you're probably not the only one that, that wants to have like that good round number mm -hmm. just add one more cent just to be above everybody else that is willing to pay one dollar so one dollar one cent that's a life so, hack yeah that's literally a life hack and it's working trust me like i tried it a bunch of times and we're we're using it all the time uh, fixed bids and dynamic bids that are up and down are good, but if you know what you're doing, like you, I, I suggest d doing it if you're advanced seller, advanced in PPC, and you know uh, what you can do there, what are the expectations, and how to focus on spend. But if if you're not really sure, down only, it's a really good option. It's basically how Amazon was working for five years before they made this change, and it's working pretty well. So if you want to test it, test it, because as we said, everything is about A-B tests. But don't like be super focused on, on, on other stuff if you're not super sure. This one is huge. It's mixed match types uh, in, in the same ad group. Like, as you can see in this example, you have exact, broad, phrase, all of them in one ad group. And like, if you decide to, to place that exact keyword as a negative exact keyword in the same ad group, you're going to block your exact keyword, you know, and that, that might be the problem. And also when you do that kind of stuff and you have a uh, broad or phrase and you want to catch some variations and you don't want to with, with them, and you increase your bid and that bid goes over exact, it's going to affect uh, that, that phrase and broad are going to start picking uh, search terms instead of exact form. So what you want to do is always keep your uh, match types separate. Uh, always keep them in, in, it would be better in, to have them separated in, at the campaign level rather than ad group level because it's easier for budgeting. But apart from budgeting, like more or less is the same if you're going to place them in ad groups or, or in campaign. So yeah, as I, as I mentioned, basically that's, I, I'm always saying the solution <laughs> for a slide so you guys can, can read it afterwards if you wish. The other thing that is super important to know is the amount of keywords per ad group. 
I'm pretty sure if if guys that that are listening to this are are seeing uh, are, are are selling for like year or two or more, and they can filter their ad group. And if they have like 200 or 300 keywords there, if they filter like lifetime, they're going to see bunch of keywords that are not working, that never worked. Especially if they filter for the last month, you'll see that like in, in a net group with 300 keywords, you're probably having around 150, maybe 200 of keywords that never worked. So what we highly suggest there is to keep it simple, and keep up to 20 to 30 keywords per ad group. And that's something that is, uh, that is working. Good performing keywords will work better. Non-performance that you take, like you take them from, from those ad groups that you already have and you see that they are not working. Like people ask like, should I pause them? Is it going to affect them? Like it's not going to affect them because they're not working obviously. You, you want to, um make them work at some point so what you want to do create separate campaigns for them and start bidding once again and you don't need to play super high bids for them they're going to start working like literally for no reason i don't know why amazon ever explained it but it's working it's literally a life hack so uh other thing is no product targeting campaigns amazon introduces a lot of stuff and one of the things that was relatively new introduced into sponsor product campaigns is product targeting. So you should branch out individual products. You can do it in so many ways. Um, you can you can basically create um, campaigns with up to 10, 20, 30 ASINs and separate them by, by groups. Like what do you want to target? You, uh, what, what we usually see with uh, Amazon sellers that they forget that how how the selling works like when when you have a retail store and you're selling let's say tvs and like when a customer comes there are two options that can happen like he comes to the store and says to a manager like i would like to buy a tv good which one i would like to buy like 43 inches tv tv like sony or samsung or whatever so what's the seller going to do they're going to try to offer a bigger one or the, the more expensive one, the one that is giving more features, they're trying to upsell. Apart from that, if potential customer says, no, 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 this is the right TV for me, I'm not going to buy any other, I already checked everything on the internet or wherever, I want this one, and I would also like, um, like I, I would like that one. So what what's the next thing that you can do as a seller? You can offer, HDMI cable, you can offer soundbar, you're trying to cross sell, you're trying to add extra stuff there to that purchase. So that's the same thing with async targeting. So what you want to do, you want to target your ASINs with your other ASINs and you always want to try to sell a more expensive one, better version of, your, of the product that customer is already looking at or you want to um give some other to sell some other product with that main product so they can buy both of them and when it comes to uh category targeting never place just a category refine it there are a whole bunch of ways how to do it um there are a whole bunch of strategies that you can use there uh one of the main things that you should focus on is like to focus on um same price range um high quality products with really good reviews so you show up there and refine like at so many levels and when you feel like that you finished with all all the refining and there are no other ways how to do it well you can ref you can target different categories if if you're selling uh, phone cases maybe you should target phone chargers or headphones or other stuff so there are a whole bunch of stuff that you can do and you can target a whole bunch of different stuff so Definitely do it. And the next thing that is heavily related to it is defensive campaigns. You, people usually skip targeting their own ASINs. Like, why should I target my own product with my other product? As I mentioned, you want to do cross-selling or you want to do upselling. So you want to sell either more expensive product or to sell two products. So 
you want to increase average order value. Increasing average order value, increasing conversion rate, in, increasing um, CTR, just by tiny amounts are going to increase your overall numbers big time. So it's super important to focus on all of those small aspects that I mentioned, like you own the, the data, um, filter it out, use some pivot tables, filter around, play around, like place different stuff and view stuff from different angles. And you are going to see new opportunities that you can do there. So when it comes to async targeting, target your own ASINs just because you want to protect your ASINs. You want to uh, protect ASINs from competitors that, that show up there. With display campaigns, like you can literally write down and it's not going to be against terms of service. Uh, this is the, I don't know, these are the the headphones that that you're looking for, and that's the the, the headline of, of your ad that is showing on 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 somebody else's product, or like this is uh, the product that works. Like this is the this is your problem solver, and that kind of stuff. So defensive campaigns are super important. Always have them in the account. Also, you should you are, do. You are, you are making and advertising uh, on competitors' listings. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, this is for creating for your own, but you should definitely, as you mentioned, like as creating defensive campaigns, you yeah. should always create attacking campaigns. Wow, cool. Yeah, especially if, for example, you're just a starter, you don't have enough money to advertise a lot, and um, you can find super expensive to to show up for some of the main keywords so mm -hmm. what you want to do instead of showing yourself for the most expensive keyword search for that keyword on amazon you're going to see a bunch of products showing up there and take uh, those products that show up on page number one and target them instead so if they're not protecting their listings some of them are not you're going to have a chance to show up on their listing. And if and how, how they are protecting their listings. They're they get... protecting their listing literally by creating cross-targeting campaigns by targeting their own nations. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's the way how, how they can easily do it. Um, okay, let's continue. Yeah, so the next thing is no sponsor display campaigns. Mm-hmm. And those sponsored display campaigns are not the same uh, display campaigns that you have in uh, advertising console. These are, as you can see, written uh, reach relevant audiences on and off Amazon. That's the main difference, off Amazon. So it's some like super basic version of retargeting. Mm -hmm. Huge sellers use platforms like DSP. So basically on DSP, you can um easily do a lot of different targeting using data from amazon but on the other hand if you're a small a smaller seller that is not willing to invest thirty-five thousand per month on dsp you should definitely create uh display remarketing campaigns they're not as effective as dsp but they're definitely going to improve uh, overall performance What's important to know, those ads are going to show outside of Amazon. So people there are not going to have buying intentions at the same level as on Amazon. So expect that you can burn your money a lot there. So keep your bids low. So you're absolutely sure that you're not overspending. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. So yeah as i mentioned you can you have audiences you can you can um use different uh, targeting methods there you can double check in, in in the presentation how you can do it the, besides the audience targeting you can target individual products uh, or refine categories so that's super important mm -hmm. uh oh this is a big one you could expect like big sellers uh, to do this regularly but they usually skip this part it's neglecting negative keywords and one of the big things that that happened literally uh, maybe five days ago amazon introduced um negative async targeting for automatic campaigns so it's like 
everybody has such a headache with that. When, when, when it comes to async targeting, they would go to search term report, they would check all of the search terms there, and they would see a bunch of asins. And they would place them as negative keywords, but nobody writes down the asin. And that's, that's, that's the problem. So what would people usually do? They would negate the brand. They would place the, the, the name of the brand as a negative and like that's it. But that's killing so many options. So Amazon introduced uh, negative ASIN uh, targeting and that's really awesome. You should definitely do it as soon as possible, especially because it's can introduced. Can you how it, how it works uh, like for an imagine, imagine a case? And, and uh, it's super easy to see basically that's that's the point when somebody is on some product listing and then clicks on your listing and instead of keyword because there is no physical search there uh instead of search term you can see the asin from where your um your your, your customer came and if they didn't uh, buy you should place them as negative keywords Basically, as a negative ASIN in automatic campaign, that's something that, that happens in automatic campaigns because mm -hmm. at, um, those that, uh, campaigns that are using keywords are, as a targeting method, they're not going to have it just because like, they are using keywords for targeting instead of like, whichever placement on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the important thing. Like, if you see um, the key, uh, the, that ASIN that is working pretty well, you don't want to negate it. What you want to do, you want to move back to a couple of slides to that defensive and attacking yeah. uh, strategies, uh, create campaign for attacking ASIN and name it as you wish, like just for you to know, like profitable ASINs targeting or whatever and, and place them there and you, you will try to steal more, even more sales in the future. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to negative keywords, this is a combination of uh, what I mentioned about keyword structuring. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you have um, all of the match types in the same ad group, that's going to be a problem. So if you have a good structure, you should definitely create negative keywords and you, you should place products that are irrelevant. Also, uh, when, what what you might consider as one of the strategies there uh, is you people usually go to search term reports, see a whole bunch of uh, product or uh, keywords that are highly relevant, but they're not performing really well. And they ask like, what should I do with them? So if that specific search term is triggered by phrase or broad and not exact, you should negate it there and create separate campaign called um, unprofitable relevant keywords or something like that. Something that you would be aware of like when you check the, the campaign. That way you're going to uh, isolate that specific search term that is relevant from other campaigns. And um, if it didn't work well there, it's okay. It's not going to show up there anymore. And in new campaign, you're not uh, getting rid of it. You're giving it a second chance. So you're placing lower bids and lower budgets for them mm -hmm. until the point they start working. Because at some point they're going to get um, good results just because they're, you're bidding on them on a different way. So, uh, uh, yeah, I already mentioned like everything instead of <laughs> using solutions. So, yeah. Um, yeah, one of the other things that I, that I forgot to mention about uh, negative keywords. people. Um, think should they use exact keywords that they have as positive keywords and place them as negative exacts in their phrase and broad or automatic campaigns. There are mixed results in that. If your account is working pretty well uh, and the numbers are okay and you don't want to go heavily on um, decrease on spend, don't do it like if you want to decrease your spend if you need to improve your blended acres or spend as a percentage of overall revenue you should definitely do it but have in mind that automatic campaigns are usually first campaigns that are introduced to new um advertising positions on amazon 
So just a couple of days ago, there, uh, there is a new bar on the right side on Amazon that is showing everything that you placed in your cart. And maybe in a couple of days, maybe in a couple of weeks, Amazon is going to test if uh, you, should, you should have some ads there. And probably automatic campaigns are going to be the first there because for Amazon, that's the easiest way how to do it. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, negative product targeting for automatic campaigns, just go to negative targeting. And instead of negative keywords, there's a new tab called negative products. You click there, add negative ASINs, and that's it. You're done. Other thing is no sponsor brands. Just let me know if I'm talking too much or, or anything. Because oh, no, uh, I think everybody, uh, everybody is very, very pleased that you are giving very specific information. You are giving more than advanced, and that's very cool. Please continue. Cool. Thank you. Glad you like it. So basically when it comes to sponsor brands, why people uh, sometimes hate using them. In the past, they were super cool way how to make extra money. Um, mm -hmm. You could expect from them that they're going to be like 10 percent of your um, overall revenue coming from sponsor brand um, campaigns. They used to be called headline search ads. And now you can get even more. You can get 20 to 30% of your PPC sales coming from, from those campaigns. But the thing is, you, you need to master what you're doing there. When you see that your brand, uh, sponsor brand campaigns are not making sales and spending money, double check your organic sales because those campaigns are something that I mentioned before we started the presentation. Uh, they're good for attribution. And like you have people that are using their phones, they're commuting and they're like, what am I going to do next? Okay, I'm searching for something. They find about the product. They find about the brand. They need to leave the bus or something and they don't buy. But your sponsor brand campaign did such a huge deal for, for the potential sale because that guy, when they um, when he or she comes to the computer, they're going to have another search they're going to use different uh, query there. They're not going to search in the same way as of the first time because now they know about the product. They know about the brand. And probably this is going to increase your sponsor product performance or your organic performance. What you want to do every week is to compare your um, ad revenue with your organic revenue. And you want to hit some sweet spot there. Like we want, we, we like to think that around 35 to 40, 45% of all sales should come from PPC because that's the healthy amount. The bigger uh, the seller you are, that number is going more and more down because people know about your brand. They know what they're searching for and your organic sales are increasing. And on the other hand, if you're a super small seller and if you see that like 85% of your sales are coming from PPC, that's a really important metric to follow. That's something super important to, to follow because that way you know that you need to rely on advertising, that there is no option number two for you at that point. So what you want to do, you want to build your brand. Like if you get extra money from, from Amazon that, that month, invest it in other stuff brand related, not only on advertising, obviously you should increase in advertising until you, you see that other sales are picking up because algorithm is learning as well. If you're getting sales from PPC, they're going to um, see the traction and they're going to compare CTR, conversion rate, add to cart to other products from the same niche. Mm -hmm. And they're going to, to like compare, are you better than the others? Are you getting the better results? Because um, in the ideal world, every search would lead to one view and then to one click and then to one add to cart and then to one purchase. And that's the ideal world that is never going to happen. And that's something that Amazon tries to get, not only because of them, 
is because the customers, because that way customer is getting the best possible result. That means that customer is pleased with what they're seeing and they're purchasing that specific product. So that's one of the reasons why, why you should be focused on sponsor brands as well. And also there are some really cool new features about uh, sponsor brands. One of the things is like when you see this, this big image here, it looks super fancy. Yeah. And that's a uh, custom image. That's part of sponsor brands and that's in beta version still uh, in the US. So like if you have the option, definitely using it's improving visibility and people are going to click on it just because you place it there. Mm -hmm. And there, it's going to increase your sales. And also if you have some really nice image like this one, you're going to end up uh, with people thinking that you're high quality brand and like you're going to improve your um, like perception from the client's perspective. Also what's, what's good and that's relatively new feature that happened this year is um, you can uh, edit your creatives. Like that's something that you couldn't do in the past. And like you, you could place your free products or more and, and that's it. You could uh, test different images for the main image. Like we tested literally everything, name it with, we tried it like from uh, logos, products, products in different colors, like which color is more clickable than the other, uh, to lifestyle images, like having people in nature doing different stuff with that product, because that kind of stuff works really well. So if you have a storefront or stuff like that, please use some images from reviews, because people like to relate to others. They want to be like, oh, I want to be that happy guy with kids and, and wife and like having barbecue or like whatever, like whatever you is your perception of, of really good life, like try to aim that one. So if, if you see that, that your creative is not working, change it. And one of the things that, that, that you should know about it is your brand logo. Uh, people usually skipped in the past, especially if you're a smaller seller. So mm -hmm. now you are, it's not optional anymore. Like you cannot test lifestyle image as a main image. Like you can do it in custom image, like as an option, but for brand logo, you're not allowed to use anything that is not your logo. So have that in mind. Uh, it was really bad, bad in the past, especially for cell phones when you were searching for the product or mm -hmm. you, you did some search query, you would see a logo of some unknown brand and you would just skip it. And mm -hmm. now that's not going to happen and it's not going to happen because of this. You can see the uh, new layout versus the old one. In the old layout, um, that logo would cover most of the headline search ad, sponsor brand ad. On the other hand, what we have now, we can see the first product and we can start seeing like the second one. So you can, in both versions, you can, you could scroll it, but it's a different size mm -hmm. and it's affecting your CTR and it's affecting a whole bunch of stuff. So that's the main reason. And what's really important just not to skip that part is, uh, si since this change happened, you can use sponsor brand ads without any products so you can advertise your logo there it's not cool don't do it like i know that you want to improve your brand awareness sometimes but add your products as well make sure that when you're running out of stock when your product is not in the buy box pause the campaign and turn it back on when when your product is back in stock because um, Amazon is now leaving the option to click on a brand, go to storefront and so on. So you, you can see the other products. Uh, one of the things is store spotlight. Mm -hmm. It's uh, still not available for everybody and it's uh, mobile only. And it's basically um, the new way how to display a link to the store and or some sub pages inside of the store. So it's a really good thing test it, try it, it, it might work. There is one more thing um, when it comes to sponsor brands is um, automatic translation offered by Amazon. It's uh, machine, so it's not human, so sometimes they can screw everything up. Uh, it, it, if 
you are able to get a translator. There are some really good uh, agencies there. I know that one agency recently talked at, at, at your webinar, Wildly Translations. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you, I think you, you spoke to Jana in the past or... Right, right, yes. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not promoting her because she's my fiance, but uh, because she's really good with, at what she's doing. <laughs> so yeah, have some, some somebody that is professional to do it for you with uh, with keyword research and make it like more SEO friendly. Um, so so we there have, is, Lazar, we have some uh, 45 minutes and we have to finish. Oh, so, okay, 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 can, sorry. Can you choose? Uh, the, the last most important uh, info that you want to give to our audience? Yeah, so basically uh, do A-B tests. That's the super important thing. Test everything. When somebody says, I have like really good result with this keyword or something like you can, you can hear everywhere that, that people are like having the data from their competitors, but it's not working for them because it's not the same account. It's not the same amount of traction. It's not the same amount of reviews. So many different stuff. So always do A-B tests. Um, and I'm going to speed up even more. And that's it. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. Wow. A lot of information from you today. Thank you very much. I think that everybody, including me, will have to uh, watch the video for the second time and to stop it at, at some points to understand and to everything because you gave a lot of information, practical information. And that's especially why I uh, created the VAPI community. That, that's the reason and I'm very happy that it is happening in real life. Uh, Thank so, you so much, I'm glad that it's, it's useful. I can answer the questions by, uh, <laughs> that I wanted to ask you, but you already said everything. Uh, take, take away uh, what to do is to have uh, to do a B testing you were telling about all of, all the time yeah what not to do is not to work without strategy never yeah. work and without strategy. value that's the important thing it's not about you making money it's about making customers happy and when you have happy customers like yeah. I have an agency. Obviously, I want to get the money. I want to be rich like everybody else. But I'm never going to make money if my clients are not happy. And like if everything is custom tailored and everything is done in the right way, you're going to like money is something that will come eventually. But if, if you provide a good product, if you're selling a good product and you have good customer support, that's definitely something that's going to make you stand out from the crowd. I'm always saying that money is something that comes back from the market when you offer uh, values to the market. When exactly. you offer right values and that make people happy and that's why the money starts to come back to you. If you don't have the money, it means that you didn't offer the, the, the right value to the right market at the right time. So just think of what exactly. you are giving to the market. Exactly. And if, if, if you watch Jeff's videos, like especially the early ones, like mm -hmm. you can hear that the most important thing is a customer, like providing the value to a customer. Okay. So the one of the takeaways is provide the value for the customer. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Maybe one life hack from you in general. Uh, like how to be successful, not only on Amazon, but the, in business in general? Uh, well, there, there's a lot of stuff that, that I do on daily basis. And one of the most important, yeah, one, 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 okay. <laughs> one one, one that, that I find super important is something that they call thinking time. So okay. because when when you're stuck with your business and working and like as you grow, you're going to add your... Uh, your uh, new colleagues and like business is growing and you have a bunch of people around you and you have clients and everything. So business is chewing your time and your life and you don't have time to think because you're doing everything operational. You, yeah. you need to take like uh, create a routine, 30 minutes of drinking coffee or tea in the morning, turn off your phone for 30 minutes, 
take your notebook and, and, and pencil, write down the question like um, in the evening before and try to answer it in the morning. And it doesn't necessarily need to be like super big question. Like, how am I going to become a billionaire? You should start small. You should ask, like, how can I improve the product? Uh, how can I make my clients happy? How can I uh, make my colleagues happy? What can I do to improve my daily life? And that kind of stuff. And that's going to reflect everything else. Yeah, you know, people who are jogging, yeah, mm -hmm. we, we, we do pretty the same thing. Before you start, you ask one question yourself and then you go for jogging. Like somebody is running for 30 minutes, somebody for 40, somebody for one hour. But usually when you come back, you have an answer. Perfect. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> exactly it. You don't, have, you don't have a phone. Nobody is disturbing you. You're just alone with, with yourself. Yeah, you offer to uh, that it can be not the jogging; it can be just a cup of coffee. But but you have to you have to make this uh, uh, space for yourself. To yeah. And if you're doing it once a day, it's very very useful. Right. Yeah, that's one step on the side to see everything from different perspective it can affect everything a lot. Okay, thank you, Lazar. I think everybody saw that Lazar is very, very smart and knows a lot of things about Amazon and PPC. So I'll repeat that he has his own agency that's called Sellers Alley. If you have any questions about your listings, about promotion of your goods on the Amazon, please feel free to contact Lazar. We will publish the contacts and the email and yeah and also your guys are getting free audits so whoever wants to a free audit of the account it's in-depth around 20 pages audit of the account that points out all the low-hanging fruits opportunities like this is the problem this is the solution well it's for free yeah wonderful that's that's a great present for everybody and uh, of course, sign up, subscribe, tell your friends about our community. Every Thursday, we have uh, we're preparing something special for you. And stay tuned. Alexandra Friedman, Vapi Community, Lazar Zepinich. Okay. Thank you, Lazar. Have a nice day. You too. Bye. Good luck.